Hey guys, Matt from East Wilbur here in my home garage. And today what we're gonna be doing on is just a real quick uh, kind of down and dirty tech tip for taking out old broken studs uh, in, in a part that maybe you can't get to to drive out or, or heat and knock out. On this uh, old 39 Ford here that I'm messing with, I have an old shock mount that was uh, that's a tapered fit that was basically rusted in place and we couldn't get it off and I cut either end off and I have just a stud that's stuck in you know in the mouth there that we can't get out I can't get in there with with uh, the uh, air drift or anything like that and because the car is all assembled I really don't want to use a torch to heat and and knock that out with getting the flame underneath it here with new rubber bushings and stuff could cause a problem so what i'm going to do is is use uh my eastwood high speed drill bit uh index set here and i'm going to use these to carefully drill this stud out get it to the point where we where we can drill it all the way out and knock out just the, the little bit of metal that might be left without damaging the hole uh so that we can put a brand new part in there so let's get started all right, so here's a better look at the stud that's uh, that's actually broken off there. We had to cut the one side, uh, the other side's broke it off just beyond flush, as you can see there. So um, we need to, I can't get a drill basically in on this side, so we need to figure out a solution for that. So what I'm gonna do is actually use uh, my center punch here, this automatic center punch that comes in the uh, sheet metal layout kit, and I'm gonna use that on this side since I can get a drill on this side and center punch here and then we're going to start with a small drill bit from the drill index and uh, actually start drilling that out and then try and drill all the way through here and then once we actually break through then we can start working our way up till we basically cut out all of the uh, the old broken stud out of there so let's uh let's see if i can get a center punch and get this started and through All right, so we dropped two, two bit sizes to 15 64ths, and uh, basically, depending on the hardness of the metal or how hard it's cutting, you may, you may need to jump one at a time. This is cutting pretty good with these bits. They're pretty sharp. So I can uh, jump up two here to try to punch a bigger hole through this. So. There you go. You can see how quick that punches through. So now I'm going to jump up to, let's try 1764s. So usually that first bit's the hardest part because you got a little, little burr you have to kind of get started. There we go. So we're slowly punching through there. Again, now I'm going to jump up to 1964. So I'm just jumping two bit sizes at a time. All right, so we got this drilled most of the way through. Uh, it's a little tough because I'm caught in between the spring and all the suspension pieces to get a straight shot at this without uh, having my, my drill handle kind of like hit or uh, going a little off center. Uh, we're not quite perfectly centered, so I I'm very close if not all the way through on the on the edge here. Uh, this is just the reality of this stuff. You can't, when you're doing it on the car like this, you can't always uh, get a perfect shot at it. So because I don't want to go at an angle and break a bunch of drill bits, uh, what I'm going to do is take one of these uh, long carbide burrs here. Uh, you can use this in a die grinder or you can just use it in a drill. It doesn't matter. We're going to be going kind of low speed in the drill here. But I'm going to use these. These cut really fast. And now that we have a hole started, what I can do is take like this tapered one here and work my way through to knock out this excess on the left side here. And then once I get a little closer, I can use this one that's more of a like blunted edge 
or a blunted tip on it and we can kind of open all that up. It's about the same size as the, as the opening. So once I get it pretty close, I should be able to kind of go through this and this will actually cut uh, really nicely. And since it's not like a drill bit where it's gonna grab and twist, uh, we can just knock out this last little bit. But the drill bit took 90% of it out, but um, at the angle I'm at, I'm gonna start breaking a lot of drill bits. So we're gonna save some bits and start using these carbide burrs. They're really great for cutting like this. All right, since these are the long ones, I can kind of get my hands away from the, from the part. So between the, the index drills and the carbide burrs, I pretty much got 99.9% .9 of that old stud drilled out of there, but we're trying not to go too far that we end up making it sloppy and then it doesn't fit correctly. So this is a tapered fit like a tie rod would have. So um, I have another like an NOS Ford uh, shock link here and you can see that it's, it's tapered. So that needs to fit all the way through there and then seat. So, I can already tell it's starting to fit, but it's not all the way through. So we need to cut a little more there. So I'm gonna hit it a little bit more with the carbide burr. Then I'm gonna take this taper that's made for, for actually cutting these out, this tapered reamer that we can go through and just clean it up with a tapered reamer. And then we should be able to get this to fit, but we're, we're really, really close. It's basically through there. It's just, we need to carefully open that, that up just a little bit more. There's a little piece knocked out. Sweet. That's all it took. Alright, so we should be able to test fit this now. And that seats through, and I can get a nut on the other side. That's pretty good. So we knocked that little piece out just with using the reamer. Actually, even though I was going to ream it out, it, it actually knocked it and spun it loose because it was just the remnants left. But it all fits real good, so I'm going to clean it out with some pre, and uh, and then we should be good to go here. I'm able to save that. All right, so after cleaning everything up with some pre, it looks like this shock shock link is going to fit really, really nicely, and I don't think I really damaged anything on that perch area. Now the reason we needed to take care of that is that is that perch area actually goes through the front axle through the radius rods or wishbone on the front end. In order to knock that out, we would have had to take the whole front end of the car out just for a broken shock, shock link uh, stud. It, it was kind of one of those things where it would have been a lot more time and work to take it all apart rather than try and extract the stud like that. So uh, I used the combination of the drill index until I got to a point where the bit was kind of grabbing and I was at an angle uh, and I didn't want to really break bits. Uh, so I went to these these long carbide burrs and I was able to kind of work these around and basically just kind of oval out the, the old stud and just knock out the areas that you could see was a little bit thicker. So I got to the point where it was like basically paper thin, hit it a little bit more with the carbide burr and then I took my uh, 
my little tapered reamer here and I went in there and I was gonna actually just taper that out and, and knock it out uh, but it actually grabbed and took that last little bit out which is great you see a little bit of rust puff out and you know that you're you're on the right track because it just extracted that metal that you've been taking out and uh, we were able to do a clean extraction without having to uh, actually cut it with the reamer which is which is a good thing so this just goes to show that you can use a combination of tools to get through a sticky job like that uh, if you just go at it with a tool or with one big drill bit and open it up and weld it shut. Um, it takes a lot of work and, and ends up um, being kind of a crude job. By taking your time using the index drill bit set, uh, some carbide burrs and a, and a number of tools, a little bit of hammering, uh, you can get it all extracted and it's something that you know isn't messed with and you're good to go with remounting everything up. So hopefully you found this, this quick little down and dirty tech tip or problem solving video helpful. If you want to learn more about the tools that I used in this video, you can click the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. Thanks guys. Catch you later.